Okay, so deck of cards. We have three classes, right? We have a card, a deck, and a player. All of these are going to inherit from the object. So we have a card, deck, player. And all of these are going to have an init function or method. The card is going to take a suit and a value and we're going to create the attributes suit and value and set them equal to whatever we pass in when we create a card. Now let's make another method show everything takes self so we have access to all of its attributes and we want to print out the card, right? So we're going to make a string and we're going to print out the value and the suit. So um, three of clubs, for example. So now our card class is done. This is all we need. We can test this by creating an instance of this card. Um, the first input is suit, the second input is value, right? So we can run this and then show. Ah, so let's comment all this out. Don't want to have errors. And we see our hello world printing from up here. We can move that. And six of clubs. So this card we have created and stored it in a card, in a variable called card, and we can run the show method. So that's all working. Now we can move on to our deck class. So when we make a deck, what do we want to do? We want to initialize an attribute called cards, and also we want to build a deck, all right? So this method, Self, just like it always does and we want to do something here right we want to create 52 cards of four suits ace through king so we can do that by Right, for suit in this array, and let's test that this works, let's print out S, which is the suit, right? So now, let's comment this out for now. Let's make a deck, right? When we run this, we see that we have spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Good, so each of these values each of these elements in our list is being passed to S at each iteration, right? So S is our suit. So now, for each suit, we want to make our cards, right? And what do we want our range to go from to? We want one, two, 14, right? because it's non-inclusive. So if we print V now, we see 
1 through 13, which is up to king, right? And we can do something like we did here, right? And see what our cards are going to be. So we have our value, and we have our suit. And we see this, we got all of our cards, right? Awesome. So we know we have the proper values. Now, what do we want to do with each one of these cards? We want to add it to the cards list. And what do we want to add? We want to add a card object, right? An instance of the card class. So we create a new card, and we pass in the suit and the value. So now, it all runs, no errors. Let's create a show method to test and see if this is working. So for every card in self.cards, show that card. Call the show method that that card has. And down here we can do So we see all of our cards again, right? So this is great. We have all of our cards, spades, through hearts, all the way, everything there. Great. Now, what do we want to do? We want to be able to shuffle our deck, right? So Fisher Yates Shuffle is a very good uh, shuffling algorithm. It makes sure that every card has an equal likelihood of ending up in every other position. So to do this, we're going to need random. And we want to do a for loop Oops. Um, for, let's say, i in range. And we want to go from the end of our list back to the beginning. So for minus one, right, because this is inclusive and we want to start at our length minus one, which is the last element. And in this case, we want to go to zero, decrementing, right? So let's see what we get here if we print i. Let's come this out. Call shuffle. We're getting 51 through 1, which is exactly actually what we want. You might think we want to go from 52, but remember, when we're accessing elements in an array, we want to start at the length minus 1 because the index is start at 0. And in this case, we want to start at 1 because by the time we shuffle every other card, this, that zeroth index is also going to be shuffled, so we don't want to shuffle that one itself. So now we want to create a random number. So we're going to call random randin, and we're going to pass it a range, and our range is going to be from zero to i. So we only ever want to pick a random number that's to the left of our current position, right? Because we're starting at the right of the list, iterating backwards, and we want to pick a random integer or random index that's to the left of that. Then we want to swap two cards, the card at i. and the card at, let's just call it R. Cool. So after we call shuffle, let's show our deck. And if we look here, we have a relatively shuffled deck. Now you have to remember that this is pretty random. So sometimes things like clubs clumping together a little bit, 
or double sevens, that just happens, right? So this is a pretty random deck. If we look at this, we're getting a random assortment every time. So great, our random or our shuffle function works. Next, we want to be able to draw a card from this deck. So this one, we can just return cards.pop, right? Remove a card from the deck. In this case, it's going to be the end of the deck, so we can think about that as being the top. And return that card to whatever method called the draw, right? So this is pretty much everything we need. We can build our deck. We can show our deck, we can shuffle our deck, and we can draw from our deck. So now, actually before we start the player, let's see if draw works. So card is going to equal deck dot draw, and then let's show the card that we drew. Oops, we need our deck. Let's shuffle it. So we got a three of spades. Let's do it again. Eight of hearts, eight of spades, eight of clubs, lots of eights. That was interesting. So we have a random card. We're pulling it off of our deck, right? We're storing it in a variable. And because this card variable is an instance of the card class, we can call show on it. Great. So now let's build our, our player class. So what does a player have? player has a hand. It's going to start off as an empty array, or an empty list, right? So a player should be able to draw from the deck. So this draw method needs access to the deck that it's going to draw from, right? If you ask a player to draw a card, they're going to say, from what deck, right? You can't draw a card from thin air. So we're going to pull or we're going to pass in a deck so that we can draw this card from whatever deck we want. And we are going to append that card that we get back to our hand, right? So this deck is going to be whatever deck we pass in. We're going to call the draw method. Let's just call this draw card, make a little better, right? So deck draw card is going to return a card and we're going to take that card and append it to our hand, right? Because a function is equal to its return value, right? So we can just put this right in append. We don't have to create a variable or anything like that. So let's, so we can test this. Let's Make a show hand method. Right, which is very similar to our previous one. For card in hand, call the show method of that card. So let's make a player. So player should also have a name. player feels lonely being called nobody. So it has a name. Let's make Bob. So Bob now is a player, right? Let's call him Bob. Bob wants to draw a card from deck. And then Bob wants to show his hand. Four of spades. Seven of diamonds. All right, so let's return self here, because then we can chain these draw methods, right? So now we can draw two cards, and we have three of diamonds and eight of diamonds. 13 and 4, 9 and 12, right? So pretty random, pretty random. Great. 
So we have our draw, we have our show, we also want to be able to discard. For now, we don't actually know what we want to do with this, this card that we're discarding, right? So we can just return one of those cards, right? So you could add other logic to this. Maybe you could have it take a, a suit and a value. You could look for that suit and value in your hand and discard it if it existed, something like that. Um, but yeah, we can just do this for now. It's very simple, discard. And I think that's it, right? So we have our card class, suit and value. We can print the card which is useful because we can call this method anywhere in any of our other classes because each card has this method. We have our deck, has cards, right? And we're calling this build method, which is an internal method of each instance so that we can recall build also, right? So later on, if I wanted to remake this deck, I've shuffled it, right? And then let's show it. Let's call that this for now. We have a shuffled deck. It doesn't look very shuffled right there, but it is. It's shuffled. And then if we want a deck dot build and show it again. Right? So we have the shuffled deck up here. And then we've got our nice organized deck down here. So same deck, but we can rebuild it. We can resort it if we want. Awesome. Then we can show our deck as we did. We can shuffle it using the Fisher Yates shuffle. We can draw a card from it. And then our player can draw a card from a deck and can show their hand and they can discard a card. So there is the deck of cards. All done.